Hello creators. In this tutorial, I'm going to go over the basics of the Zoom H6 handheld recorder. These are the devices that you can check out. You can request them from the cage, as we call it, the cage in Mahoney, downstairs right next to the studio. I believe it's room 101, I think. I'm not 100% sure, but at any rate, this is the unit and you can see it kind of fits in your hand. It comes in a case like this, typically. Sometimes it'll be a plastic case, but. And it has a lot of buttons and bells and whistles, and it can be very intimidating and very confusing, but I promise you that it's it will be okay. One of the first things I want to point out to you is that at the very top, there's a connecting point there and there'll be nothing connected to it. There are some other external microphones that you can attach to this and they're sitting on the desk here. There's another one that's not here on the desk, but I'll, I'll go over those in a minute. And then on the side at the very top, there are four input jacks. And you'll see that they correspond to channel one, two, and then three and four on this side. And then there's some buttons here in the, in the, the center of that uh, array of analog, good old fashioned analog knobs. And it's called a pad and it says zero uh, to minus 20 dB. And what that will do is it'll create a, a reduction in input volume or gain. And that's because, 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 because these inputs are dual inputs. They will take an XLR input. This is pretty standard in the audio industry. Anybody that's a musician or a singer, you've probably seen this kind of jack before. So this will go in here. But these are dual jacks, and it will also take this quarter-inch style. Let's stick that in there. And that is typically a guitar jack or a keyboard or some other instrument. So this is uh, the type of unit that you can use to record music and singing as well. And it does a pretty good job. Now let's uh, take a look at the side here. There's a slot. There's usually a little plastic uh, rubber cover that sits over this, but it falls off a lot, and this one's missing it. But this is where the SD card slot is. So this is a, a very uh, typical uh, SD card. It holds information. You're going to record onto it, and it goes in this way. The little, see that little cutoff part there, or that little slopey part there? It goes in like this with the label up, and you have to kind of Stick it all the way in and it gets stuck in there. So, and to get it out, you just kind of tap on it and pop it back out like that. So that's the SD slot. And then this is for a headphone jack. It's got a little headphone symbol. And this is the volume control only for the headphones. This will not control the volume of microphones or input or anything else. It will only control, with, control what's coming out to the headphones. Okay, and then our power button is over here. We'll power it on in a sec. Um, I'll get to these in a moment. Let's take a look at the other side. There's two more inputs, as we already discussed. And then there's this scroll and press wheel. So this kind of goes up, or it's really hard for you to see that. Um, it goes down, and it goes up, and then it also presses in. So it can go up, down, and in. And then there's a menu button. And then there's this guy. This is an old style USB. These are one of the very first USB ports. Uh, and that's a wonky connector. And you'll still see them around. You probably have one in your um, junk drawer somewhere. But 
this is uh, for two purposes. You could uh, plug this into a, a, a five volt source, like a charging brick, and this could be powered that through that way while you're using it. I don't typically do that. It's a little clunky, Another yet another cable, another wire to have. But this port also does something else, and it will connect to your computer, too. So this actually can serve as what is called an audio interface. And you, that way there you could get an analog microphone and bus it into your laptop, which is a digital device. So this would take an analog signal and make it digital so your computer likes it. Um, typically don't do that either. I rec we record typically to the card and then pull the card out, put the card in a computer, and that's how we get our recorded files. Okay, so let's uh, flip it over. And we'll take a look at the back. The back has a speaker. Uh, it's really horrible. <laughs> and it's meant to just kind of, you know, say you don't have a pair of headphones and you want to know for sure that you recorded something, you need to hear it. Um, you can, you can uh, play back some clips here and hear it. But again, it's horrible. But it also has a quarter 20 uh, jack, or I'm sorry, not jack, connector point so that this could go on top of uh, a mic stand or a boom or something like that. Um, and then there's the battery compartment. And uh, the batteries will not be in there when you get it. There are two in here already, so I'm just going to put the last two in. And oftentimes there's a little uh, strip of cloth in here. Um, and if you, this is missing because these things happen to these devices. So, so that little strip of cloth is missing. But if you lay it out before putting the batteries in, it sticks up over here. And then you can just lift that little ribbon up, that little cloth up, and it pulls all the batteries out. Now they're kind of in there and you got to dig your fingernail in there or you got to use a, you know, some kind of uh, a little something to wedge in there to get those batteries out. But no big deal. And then... Of course, we got to put the case cover back on for the batteries. And let's see. Uh, why don't we power it up? So this is the power button here. And we're going to pull it toward uh, the bottom of the device and hold it for a moment. And then you'll see this screen will light up. So let's pull that forward. And it's got... So, okay, good. So there it is. And this is a handy screen because it will give you the levels of all the inputs and you can see whether or not you are at the right level, the input level. It also has a little battery meter there in green right there. Uh, it has a clock so it can tell you how long you've been recording. It also tells you that we are recording uh, this as a WAV file, and it also is indicating that phantom power is on. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. But phantom power is necessary for a microphone that is called a condenser microphone. It needs a little bit of voltage for it to work, and we'll talk about that in, in a little bit. But let's talk about this screen and activating the menu because there is one thing that I want everyone to know how to do, and that is to format this SD card that's in here. So every time you put uh, an SD card in here and get it from the cage, it should be clean and deleted, but oftentimes it's not. And what happens when you record is folders get created. So when you plop that into your computer, you're going to see a bunch of different folders. And if you don't format this card, which is erasing everything on it and starting fresh, you will have all those folders plus yours. And it's going to be real difficult to find your files. You're going to have to click on them and listen to them. But if you format, you will know right where they are. So um, let's uh, hit the menu button. 
And now we have uh, a vertical list of items that we can check out here. And we're going to go up and down that list by moving this up or down. So I'm going to pull down on it and you'll see I'm going to go down the list folder. Now I'm in comp limiter, low cut. I'm in the input and output section. I'm in the recording format. I'm in play mode, so forth and so on. But what I want everyone to know is that if you go all the way down to the to this SD card, it says SD card. I'll go down one. I'll click down one more time. And I'm, again, I'm hitting this little uh, lever wheel over here. Now, to get into the menu, there's three choices there. SD card remaining or remain. That is what's left on this SD card. And then there's format and then there's a performance test. Really, all I want you to know is format. So I'm pressing in now on this button. And when I press in, I'm going to drill into that menu. See, it turned red. Now I'm going to pull the, the wheel down and I'm in format. I'm pressing in. And it's going to ask me, are you sure? Because you got to be sure, right? You don't want to delete something that you've recorded. So I'm flicking the, the, uh, this wheel down to get to yes. And then I'm pushing in. And it's done. So to get back, I'm just going to hit the menu button there. And now we're back to the main screen looking at the input levels. All right, let's take a look at some of these attachments. Um, this is a stereo external microphone array, and it's in what's called XY positioning. And that is because this is probably the best way to record uh, sounds as they are heard by the human ears. So that's why they are positioned with one facing that way and one facing that way. It has an, its own analog uh, lev uh, gain input knob control. So, you know, you could use this without putting any external microphones into it. However, you're not going to get studio quality sound. This is good for, um, it, it, it's possibly good for recording sounds out in nature. It is good for capturing people talking, but not necessarily getting a high quality sort of like a podcast quality audio recording. Um, but they are very, very powerful microphones. And I encourage you to experiment with them. So, and these unattached by pressing in these two buttons here on the side and then gently pulling it off there. So you might find here that there's actually a little plastic cover on that. And this one does not have that on there. But if you see that there's, it's not going in, that's, that's why there's a little plastic cover covering these so they don't get harmed and smashed up. So hopefully that won't happen here. Um, here's another awesome adapter. And this is a shotgun microphone. And again, it has its own analog gain control. And I'm using the word gain here for a reason. I'm not calling this volume, and I'll tell you why in a moment, but this is a very directional microphone. And this is the type of microphone that you may see somebody holding on, uh, you know, a handheld boom and holding over the talent in a, in a video shoot or something like that. Uh, this is great for nature sounds. This is great for ambient noise in a room. This is a very, very cool microphone. And I encourage you to try that out as well. 
and we'll pull that off of there. And then I just want to show you how to connect a regular microphone. So again, analog microphones take XLR connectors. So I'm going to plug this guy in there. And then, so that's the, the male end. And then this is the female end of the XLR. And this is going to go into, um, why don't we choose a, a traditional vocal mic? This is a Shure SM58. And many of you have probably held one of these, talked into one, sang into one. Uh, they are the industry standard. They're about $100. Professional musicians use them all the time. You've seen them, whether you know it or not, you've seen these a million times. And they're quite durable. There's a joke in the industry that you can hammer in nails with this. You can't, but the joke is that, you know, they take falls really well, uh, things like that. Not that I'm encouraging anybody to do a mic drop, but this is a dynamic microphone. And this does not need phantom power. So I shut the phantom power off in there. And we'll, we'll go over that later. But uh, basically, I just wanted you to see that I have one microphone. I have it plugged into input number one. I am going to press the number one here. Now we can start to talk about some of these controls here. But this makes that uh, input working. Otherwise, this will not work. That input will not work. So I'm pressing number one. This is number one. And if I turn up the volume and talk, you can see down here, oops, I'm going into the red. I've got the gain up too loud. I'm at 10 here. Oops, over here. This is hard for me because I've got a camera pointing down. But I, I need to turn that down because you do not want to be up in the red there. You want to be down somewhere around minus 12 dB, which is just as it starts getting yellow. If you can see that a little bit better, just when it starts getting into the yellow, this is a safe place to be. If I'm up here in the red like that, you see that light start blinking over the number one and you see it hitting the red there, that's going to sound horrible. That's going to sound completely distorted. And the problem with distortion uh, on on recording at the time of recording is you can't get that out. You can't take that out in post-production. So this is uh, getting good production values at before you record is setting up this level. You're also going to have headphones plugged in here and you're going to be able to hear that uh, exactly as it is coming into the device and you will also hear that distortion. So you really should have headphones on and you should be wearing them and throughout the entire recording. And if you're doing an interview, then you should have a splitter put in here and the other person should be wearing headphones too. It's, it's industry standard to do that. It's radio standard, bar broadcasting standard. Uh, it's why you see uh, podcasters often wearing headphones. Okay, so I've got the microphone at a good level. And let's talk about this control here and gain. I want you to understand, um, first of all, that there are preamps in this device and they're pretty good quality preamps. And what that does is it takes the signal coming from the microphone and boosts it a little bit after it gets into the device. So this control isn't controlling the volume, it's controlling how much input is coming into the device. I know that's, that's a little counterintuitive, but we call that gain and not volume. So what is the input gain? And I like to set it around five or six when I'm using a mic like this. Now, if I want to use a condenser microphone. Now, ours are not going to look like this. Uh, the ones we have are about double this size. So they're like this long barrel. As a matter of fact, probably going to look something like, like this. 
and they are condenser microphones. So, and as is this one. So I'm going to unplug this one and I'm going to, I'm about to attach this, but I need to show you how to turn on the phantom power so that this microphone will work. It needs a little bit of a boost and it, but it's got the same kind of input and everything else. It's just needs a voltage boost. So I'm going to go into menu by pressing the menu button on the side. And I'm going to go to, um, okay, let's say I was at the top there. I'm going to come down to this microphone symbol. Make sure you can see that okay. And the, I'm going to press in on the side button so that I can go down to phantom power. And I now am going to select the on and off toggle. And track one, that's the one that I'm in. I'm going to turn it on. Okay, now that I have that on, I'm going to back out of the menu by hitting the menu button several times and getting back to the main screen. And now I'm going to plug that. I've disconnected the other microphone, and now I'm going to plug that condenser mic in. And perhaps I should have showed you that, indeed, plus 48 volts is now back on down here. It was when I first started this video, but I had turned it off. So now I have this microphone, and I'm talking into this microphone right now, and it's, oops, this is a very sensitive microphone. So you can see I'm still at five where I was before when it comes to the input gain, but this microphone is hotter and it, is, it needs to be turned down a bit, but it is working as a condenser microphone with phantom power. So I'm going to turn this down a little bit more. Check one, two, test one, two, check I think I'll turn that back up a tiny bit. Check one, two, test one, two. And now I want to record something using this microphone. So I'm going to press this record button. And you can see that the, the uh, clock turned red at the top. You can see I'm talking into the microphone and I am capturing my voice right now. What you're hearing me say is going to be recorded onto the card there. So... When you're done recording, you just hit the record button again. Now, there's some transport controls here. So you could stop and play and pause and move scrub forward and backward in the timeline. But I'm not going to go over that right now. And I don't think we're really going to need to do that. You may want to listen back with your headphones to something. But... Possibly not. So a um, couple of last things that I will talk about. There is yet another attachment that I forgot to mention. And that is this one. This is just a picture of it. This is not here on my desk. I'll show you how I move it around. So this is a mid-side capsule and it will connect onto the top. And it is a very kind of unique microphone where it has two microphones in it, and it has one facing the speaker, and it's omnidirectional, meaning it covers a wide pattern. And then it has one on the side. And this uh, array or this configuration allows for some interesting things that can be done in post-production. And it has to do with you will be capturing a stereo signal and a stereo making a stereo recording but in post-production you can fold that down to a mono track but still get a lot of the uh, interesting stereo effects including panning and things like that so it the, it these are in the cage i just don't happen to have one here at my home uh, and you can experiment with these as well and then Let's see, what else should I mention here before 
I end the video. Oh yeah, one last time, these, these pads up here. So say I did plug in my guitar. Okay, so say I go into channel two with my guitar and I now need to activate that channel. So now I'm in two and I have a, a, a gain control for that. And I, my guitar doesn't have any strings on it, but I'm just going to tap. I'm touching the end here and you can see that it's buzzing. But because the, the, the level coming from a guitar could be hotter than the level coming from a microphone, I might need to put this pad on there. And all this is going to do is attenuate or lower the input gain of channel number two. So if you do plug in an instrument and there's nothing you can do to stop it from peaking down here and distorting, throw the pad on. That's what that is for. And I think that's a good place to stop right there. I hope this helps. The world is a great place with good people doing awesome things. Never stop creating. Thanks for watching.